Hi Flosstube friends, it's Sherry Colorado Cross Stitcher here on YouTube, also on Instagram, and I have a cross stitch shop at coloradocrossstitcher.com. So this is my channel about my own personal cross stitching, and then at the end we do a little bit of shop news like the last five minutes for anyone who's interested in seeing some new things. Okay, let's start today. So I have finishes, I have some new patterns, I have, let's see, we're going to talk a little bit about color again like we did on the last one, but I had a question that was a good question, so I want to answer that. My three things, giveaway, so let's jump in. First of all, my calendar, you know I do the calendar every month, so here's October, and I usually keep my new starts down the side so I can write what the fabric is, what the count is, any substitutions I made with the threads. If I run out of room, I do more across the bottom. So it was a good stitching month if I have to do that. I wanted to tell you one thing about stickers. I know I over sticker, but I know some of you like to sticker too. So when I um, start a new month, I try and put stickers in corners of dates. Otherwise, I find that I'm writing all on the same line and then I'm stickering all on the same line and I just think it looks better to mix it up. So November I have just a couple of things on there. So I'm going to go through and put a few more things, you know, in the crossroads here so that I can fill in around them and I don't know, I just think it looks more fun. So that is the calendar. And let's talk about the stitching. So the first thing I did since my last Floss tube was this, and this is a new pattern from Stacy Nash. What's it called? A farm market pin key. Okay, so I want you to look at this pattern. Um, it it has an outline of a house, I guess, or a market stand, I guess it would be. And I love that tree in the middle. I love the colors, the pumpkins. I think it's fun to have the dog pulling at the thread. Um, I love all of that. Didn't love the words necessarily, didn't necessarily want to put the top on it. So what I did was I stitched the parts I liked and made it into a pillow, a big pillow. Since I made it into a bigger pillow, I stuffed some of it with fiber fill and then added a little bit of the lizard litter, crushed walnut shells that I usually stuff my pillows with. I probably should have just stuffed it all with the lizard litter because I, I just like the feel of that better. But anyway, this is how I did it. I changed the little bit of thread that the dog's pulling in his mouth. Let's see. It was a little wedge in the pattern. So I just kind of, I don't know, made it a little circle like he was playing with it. So you see I left off the words, I left off the farm market, and but I really love the tree. And I love, like I said, I love the colors in that. Okay, what was the fabric I used? Let me look it up for you. It's something a little bit light blue. Glasses, hold on a second. All right, so farm market, 40 count waterfall by forbidden fiber. Okay, then I thought this pumpkin. I love this pumpkin. I love the curly vines on it. I love the whiteness. You know, I love white pumpkins anyway. And I wanted that on its own. So then I took 25 count navy Lugana and I stitched it over to just the pumpkin. And then I just put a really simple checkerboard border around the edge. And that's the kind of thing, you know, I've talked before about how I have some Halloween stuff, but not very much Thanksgiving stuff. And this is the kind of thing that I can keep out for Halloween or through the month of November. And I thought it would look really cute in a dough bowl along with this. So just a reminder about, because I've done that before, stitched things or taken parts of a pattern and stitched it bigger. And one of those things is behind me. Okay, I'm just gonna pick it up so you can see it. So this is a, a flat fold that I did at a silver needle retreat. I think it was the first retreat I went to. 
This is from a little corner of Cinnamon Stars by Plum Street. So if you have the Cinnamon Stars pattern, you can see the little corn and the little scarecrow in the corner. And we stitched this, I don't really know what that fabric is, but it's pretty big. I don't know if it's like a seven, it might be a seven. So just remember that you can take parts and pieces and you don't even have to stitch it on the same count. You can stitch it on a bigger count or go over two and make it bigger. I brought this back from the shop and I've showed you this before, but this is an example of on 36 count, what it looks like if you stitch one thread over one, two threads over two, which a lot of times you do on 36 count. Some people like one over two on 36. And then we have four over four and six over six. So even on the regular fabrics that you have, you don't have to go out and buy um, like a 14 count or a 28 count over two or a whatever. You can use the fabrics you have and just stitch over more squares and make them bigger. I knew that if I stitched this pumpkin still on 40 count, just by itself, it was going to be too little. And so by doing it on this 25 count Lugana over two, it's basically 12 and a half count. And so that's how you make it bigger. So you can do that with your patterns, which we've talked about before, but I just want to encourage you, if you love a particular motif on something like I did with the pumpkin, um, stitch it by itself and make a little pillow out of it. I'll show you this again. So you can kind of get a feel for, the difference in size. So typically you'd stitch and it would be this size on a 36 count because that's two over two, but you can all the way go all the way up to six over six, six strands of DMC. I think I use DMC here. So the whole six strands and stitch over six squares and you can make it a whole lot bigger. So, all right, so that was the first thing I did, the little farm market. I mean, isn't that the most beautiful tree? I, I just love this pattern and the colors. And somehow I found a fabric in my stash that kind of went with the peachy on the front. That never happens. All right, so that was the first two little things that I did. And then my friend Deanna was stitching this free pattern from La Di Da called Smell My Feet. And it was so adorable, so I decided to stitch that too. Let's see if I can hold it. So here's that. And I think on the pattern, the stockings are a solid color. Deanna made hers um, orange and white striped, and I decided to do mine lime green and white striped. But then as I was stitching the lime green, I thought it would also be really cute to do like candy corn colors for the stockings. But it was a super quick stitch, and I love the font of the words. I just think the whole thing is cute. And I will, let's see, I will try to remember to link below, but if I, if I forget that, just do um, la di da. Let's see if it shows la di da. Let me fold this so you don't see the pattern. Type in la di da freebies. And this is one of the first ones that come up. So thank you to Lori for that free pattern. Okay, the next thing I did was, um, I showed you this last time, but I fully finished it. So remember the Autumn Quaker that was so beautiful, upside down, so beautiful in the orange color. But I had threads left over from my Words for, Words for Home Harvest that I showed you the last time. And I decided to do this in color. So this is what it looks like in color. And then I just did it up as a pillow. So here's the pattern. Again, here's the pattern. And then here is using different colors. And if you get my newsletter, I put a picture of this in the newsletter. Um, the last time, let's see, this week's newsletter with the colors, um, Just Russ, Chesapeake Bay, Sassy Brass maybe, 
anyway if you look on my Instagram I have all the colors listed if you want to duplicate that but basically I took a blue a yellow an orange and a brown that I liked and just kind of figured it out as I went along and again the way I did it was there are certain things on this pattern that I knew wanted needed to be a not needed but I wanted to have a specific color so I knew the pumpkins I wanted to have them be orange um, there's a little acorn down at the bottom uh, and then at the leaves here around here I wanted to make different colors and then I just kind of filled in so if I had orange here I wanted to do yellow over here for the sunflower and then I figured oh I needed more yellow here and here so just kind of move the colors around well then they came out with the Christmas Quaker this week last week whenever they came out with it but we got it quick and I stitched that one up and had a lot of fun with that too so here is the Christmas Quaker again it looks beautiful all in red but I just decided to, since I did it for the Autumn Quaker, to do it for the Christmas Quaker. So here's the Christmas Quaker in colors. Again, I knew that I wanted that bigger flower in the middle to kind of be like a poinsettia. So I did that in red with a little green around the edges for the leaves. I knew I wanted the Christmas tree to be green. I did the ornaments in just greens because I did the stem of the ornament or the hanging part in yellow and the ribbons in red. So again I just kind of moved it around. I did the little border along the top and side in green with little red dots because I thought that was kind of like um, holly berry leaves and a vine. So I'm going to make this into a cute little pillow as well. And I did not, I did write down what colors I used. Okay, let me tell you what colors I used in case you want to use them. I used Eve's Leaves from Classic Color Works, Ribbon Red from Classic Color Works, Ye Old Gold, and Mistletoe. I think those are all Classic Color Works. But again, you can just pick, what I did was just pick a light and dark green that I liked and kind of a gold color that I liked and a red that I liked so it's not hard you can just pick whatever you love and I love it again in the solid color but I thought it would be fun to do in the colors since I did the other one in colors Christmas Quaker which we have on the website and then I did a prairie schooler I don't know if I should even admit to this. Okay, I was, I, we just added this one to the website. I have, I don't know, we probably have 95, 100 different Prairie Schooler patterns because they are so timeless to me. You can, 95% of them are timeless. Um, you can go and pick any one of those out and they're still as beautiful and relevant today as they were in the 80s and 90s when a lot of these were designed. And I love that about Prairie Schooler. So uh, each time I order from the distributor, I add a few more titles. And so I added this one to the website. And as I was adding it, and it was like, I don't know, 4.30, quarter to five on a Saturday, I thought, oh my gosh, I wanna do that. Cause I wanna do like an autumn village. And so I quickly pulled the fabric, pulled the threads, um, brought it home and started it. And it's not a fall village. Well, I'm gonna show you the pattern. To me, those colors say fall. And I just look at this, I think, oh, they've got pumpkins in the little cabinet, and they've got this beautiful dried flower arrangement. And that's exactly what I'm in the mood for. And I pulled the colors and they were just a beautiful palette of um, well, I thought like a kind of a pastel fall kind of thing. And I start stitching it and I'm like, huh, well, there's flowers on there. And there's a bird with babies in the nest. That's odd. And then I suddenly realized it's not a fall pattern. It's a spring pattern. 
Here I was in the mood to do a fall pattern, but I finished it and I love the way it turned out. <laughs> but I can't believe, and I can't believe I'm telling you that too, because who doesn't look closely at a pattern? But in my defense, I was just trying to get it all pulled together so I could start it that night. You know how it is, you see a pattern, you fall in love with it, you think I have to start that right away. And so you shoom, like Laura says, I'm Brenda, the serial starter, to get it and get it going. And then, yeah, it's definitely spring. There's bunnies going across the bottom. You see the bird over in this bottom corner feeding the babies. There's another robin over on that corner. Blossoming trees, flowers. I don't know what I was thinking. I still like it. And then I realized I do have the Autumn Village pattern because it has a turkey on it that I've always wanted to do. I realized that all of these villages, you guys already probably know this, but all of these villages are basically the same buildings, the same layout, just changed for the seasons. So the fall one has these same buildings just with fall trees and fall things. So now I'm not sure if I want to make the fall one because I feel like I've already stitched all those buildings. So I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to do it. I was kind of disappointed, but I didn't want to stop and start over. And like I said, I do like it. And I needed, you know, gosh, you guys, things have been going on in the world that are so hard to see and read about. And I just needed stitching that was, that I could zone out and just relax and not have to think about all that's going on in the world which led me to do a little comfort stitching article in my newsletter this week and I just think it's important to know what what is comfort stitching to you because for some people comfort stitching is um, something really simple maybe a one color pattern so you don't even have to think about color changes um, for some people, it's maybe stitching on a bigger fabric. Like this was 28 count. I haven't stitched on 28 count in a long time, uh, but I wanted this bigger. I knew I wanted the village bigger, although I think it would be adorable on a tiny fabric too. But for this one, I wanted it bigger. And I found that was comforting to stitch on a bigger fabric. For some people, stitching on a smaller fabric is comforting because you really have to concentrate and you know that kind of blocks out all the things going on in the world so there are a lot of ways to define comfort stitching i think part of it for the prairie schooler too for me was i have done prairie schoolers since they started and since i started stitching so partly that was uh just a nostalgic comforting stitch there are so many prairie schooler patterns that i want to stitch and I just think the colors are simple. There's not a lot of um, not a lot of shading going on. The the motifs are not simple necessarily. There's a lot of detail in there, um, but it just gives you different things to focus on. And I found it a really fun to stitch this one, even though I thought I was going to be stitching fall. I really enjoyed it. So that's that. All right. Now I have, I want to remind you of the three free patterns we have for fall before I show you some new patterns that I just put up for sale, um, my, my designs. So we have pumpkin, it's a little freebie. I didn't have time to design a new one this year for fall, but I will design more, of course, for freebies. Thankful Turkey. And Ollie and Friend. You know, that's named after my Oliver. I think I, I think he was in the last Floss Tube, right? At the very beginning. Now, one thing about the patterns, when you download the freebies, they go into your cart, of course, zero charge, and um, you put your order through, and then you get an email with a link to download the free pattern. The only time I've had people have trouble downloading is if generally if they're not sure where their downloads go. So usually I email them back and just say, if you're downloading on an iPad or you're downloading on your phone, it will download, but it will disappear. It's not like it comes up on your screen. 
And for me, like on my phone, I found all my downloads in an app called, I guess it's an app, whatever, called Files that came on my phone. It's not something I added to my phone. It was just one of those few um, things that were already in an iPhone. So if you're having trouble after you download free patterns from me or La Di Da or whoever you're downloading from, um, make sure you know where your downloads go. I'm sure I Googled it to figure out on my phone where they were going. And lo and behold, I had all these downloads in my files folder. So those are three freebies that are on our website and I link to the freebies, I think in all of my notes, show notes for my floss tubes. Okay, it is the time of year that I can share the Advent 2022 patterns with you. So I design patterns to go in our Advent kit every year and I have a lot of fun doing that. And I didn't bring the pattern itself, but I'm gonna show you the actual product, project. So last year I had this idea that I wanted to do Christmas, um, Christmas colors, Christmas pin pillows, and kind of in a sampler-esque kind of design. So I did four of them, so let me show you those. So the first one is Mary. So it has a row of houses, some trees, a little poinsettia, fruit basket, and a fabulous peacock, don't you think? So that's Mary, and I, um, the trim I used is just plain red and white baker's twine, but then since this was, this is done on 36 count light mocha, light mocha or mushroom, it's listed on the website. And I, the, the, the red and white was too bright on its own, so I cut a long length of baker's twine and just set it in a cup of coffee, strong coffee overnight to kind of take the edge off. And I really like how it turned out because then it's a more primitive uh, looking baker's twine. And that worked really well. Again, I fill my, because I get this question a lot, I fill my pillows with the lizard litter, crushed walnut shells. You can, shells, you can get that at um, Walmart or pet stores or Amazon. So, and I glue my, my little trim on. So that's the first one, Mary. And then we have Good Tidings, which has a row of bright red flowers, a few little quilt squares in there to add more of a pop. Then I have Noel. Big red house, of course a big red house. We needed that. And the last one is Peace and Joy. We'll point set a border, a little fruit tree with yellow birds in it. And these, all four of them use the same four colors. So they look good in a dough bowl together if you're doing a little dough bowl of greetings for the holidays and you only need four colors. Light green, dark green, red, and gold kind of like I did with that Christmas Quaker. Um, and that's all listed on the website. Now I did, I wanted to show you this because I bought this last year at Hobby Lobby thinking that I would make each one of these into not a flat fold, but a flat and hang them from this cute, uh, well, you could do it either way. You could do it this way or you could do it this way. But I thought for Christmas it would be cute to hang each one and there's four openings in this little ladder and this was $24.99 last year and you know it's 50% off almost all the time so it was 12 or 13 bucks I guess but wouldn't that be cute putting each one of these as a flat fold in here I might have to do them again and do that because I think that would be a fun finish all right I don't know if they have this this year. Probably they do, or something similar. All right, let's see where we're at. So that is what I worked on. Uh, the only thing I have in progress now is my um, words for home for 
Christmas. So I'll have that to show you the next time. Oh, oh I was going to show you too the Advent patterns from the year before, which we've had for sale now for a year, but I just thought, well, as long as I'm showing the other ones, I'll show you that. So I have Joy, My Wish for You, which I thought would be a really fun little pattern to do for a friend. A little tie-on for a basket. And then I have Winter, A Quiet Serenity. I love this one. I keep this up in January and February with the snow. And then stitching makes me happy. Chantelle, Chantelle, I think she's Chantelle 141, did a really cute finish on this one. And I'm tempted to do this one over and finish it like she did. So check her out on Instagram or her um, website because she did a cute, cute finish on that. So that was from the year before. All right, now let's move into uh, color. So last time I talked a lot about color and I had a lot of feedback. Thank you all for all of your nice comments on that. Um, we talked about warm colors and cool colors. And one of you asked or, or made the comment that um, you had always been told correctly that on the color wheel, the warm colors are like orange, yellow, and red. The cool colors are like the blues and greens. And that's absolutely correct. Um, I'm coming at it from more of a color analysis point of view. I trained with House of Color and did color analysis for people for several years when I had my yarn shop. Loved doing color for people. And um, so that's where I'm coming from because in color analysis, when you're trying to figure out what colors are good and what season you are, um, there are warm and cool versions of most all of the colors. So that's what I'm, that's where I was coming from when I was talking about warms and cools. I'm going to do more on that. I want to get a list of DMC colors that are warm muted, warm clear, cool muted, cool clear. And the difference between cool muted, cool clear, same with warm is um, they're different seasons. So like in the warm seasons, and again this goes back to color analysis for clothing, but just to give you an idea, because when you're pulling colors together, if you pull warm muted colors together, that's a really beautiful palette for stitching. Same with warm clear. So warm clear would be the um, spring colors. So they're warm colors, but they're um, crystal clear. As opposed to autumn colors, which are a warm muted. And it's almost like you took the spring colors and added a drop of cream to them and then it changes into more of a muted. Same with the cool colors. So the summer is a muted cool and the winter is a clear cool. So if you take the winter colors, add a drop of cream, you get the summer cool, clear. Um, you don't have to know all that, but when I do a little more on this for all of us, um, I'm gonna go into dividing the DMC like that. And I wanna use DMC because um, a lot of us have DMC and that way you can reference it. I'm going to put it in my newsletter eventually. So be sure to sign up for my newsletter. Um, and I'm not going to get to that till like February because we just have too much going on at the shop for me to do it justice. But I did bring some reds for you today. And I wanted to talk to you about just telling you, like for reference, Number eight, and this is, reds are so hard to get on camera to show up right. So when I say this, I don't know if it's gonna show up at all on your screen correctly, but I'm gonna tell you what numbers and what colors they are so you can pull it at your house. So 817, 817 is a true red. Interestingly enough, this is the color that everybody can wear. No matter what season you are, if you're warm or cool, muted or clear, everybody can wear a true red. So that's 817. If you take a true red and add a little bit of blue to it, then you get a cool red. And here are some examples of cool reds. So cool reds are, oh, okay, let me tell you. 816 and 498 are both reds 
that are cool that have added that have had that little bit of blue added to them and then if you take the true red and add yellow or yellow tones to it which will make it a warm you get things like 349 and 321 warm reds cool reds warm reds when you're looking at like these kinds of colors buckeye scarlet ruby slipper are both warm reds see how those all kind of go together and I pulled out Schoolhouse Red and Cupid for Cool Reds. All right, so that gives you a little bit to go on in terms of pulling it in your own stash if you're interested in this. But I think a lot of you said it helped you feel like you could maybe swap out some colors if you just think about warms versus cool. And again, on the color wheel, yes, the warms are the reds, oranges, and yellows, the cools are blues and greens, but you can have a variety of both of those. And when you're doing things like stitching with so many different floss colors and so many different threads, and you wanna think about swapping something out, it pays to know um, if you're working within the cool palette or working within the warm palette, or like we talked about before, you might be doing a warm palette and then you want a cool pop of color. And that really helps, I think, highlight the things that you're doing the cool pop with um, and vice versa. So I'm gonna do more with that. I will talk about that again. And I know you have, a lot of you have said, do it with fabrics. And I absolutely would love to do that, pull fabrics that are warm and cool. And I also wanna talk about um, stitching cool colors on a warm fabric and stitching warm colors on a cool fabric and also warm to warm and cool to cool. That's really interesting. But I'm going to get a list of DMC colors, um, a variety of different colors that are warm and cool and put them on a ring and then I can kind of demo to you um, holding up warm on cool, cool on cool and that kind of thing. I think it'll make a lot more sense. So give me a little bit of time to pull that together but I just I love color analysis so much. Um, I just, I don't have time to do it anymore. I always thought maybe I'd go back to it eventually, um, but it is really fun to do. If you have not had your colors done, or if you had them done back in the 80s and 90s with Color Me Beautiful, you might think about doing, making an investment in yourself and doing that. It is, um, it's not cheap, but I'm telling you, you will save as much money as you spend having your colors done, you'll save that much and not buying the wrong colors of clothes. And House of Color also has style analysis that is super interesting. And I highly recommend you do that too. So go to houseofcolor.com and color is spelled C-O-L-O-U-R because it's a company from the UK. And uh, find a consultant or a, um, it's a franchise really find somebody near you that does it. Please don't, oh, I hope I'm not gonna offend anybody, but please don't have your colors done via a computer with somebody. Because as we already talked about, computers are calibrated differently. You really need to be sitting in natural light when you have your colors done. So just be careful who you're paying to do your colors, but it's a really good investment if you are interested in that kind of thing. Some of you could care less about what you wear and I totally get that too, so. All right, let's move on to my three things. All right, my three things today. I was really excited to find these and I ordered them as quick as I could for the shop. And these are mag dots. And I ordered two different kinds, bars and dots. I don't know why I ordered two different kinds, but if you have a preference, this is what I use them for. You know, we've talked about um, if you stitch in a hoop, or even if you stitch in hand, you've got a lot of extra fabric falling around your hoop or that you're trying to hold tidy in your hand. And we've talked about those magnetic ties that we've used before on that. This is even better, and let me show you. So this is them in use, and they you don't have the strap from the magnetic tie, you don't have the extra, you know, floppy stuff and they hold so many layers of fabric they are super super strong so keep them away from your kids 
and keep them away from your pets for sure. Um, in this package you get a little square, a little magnetic square on the inside that you can keep all of these dots on. You get three pairs in each. I also have a metal um, lamp next to my stitching chair so I just keep them on the arms, not the arms, the base of the lamp that's metal. I just stick them right on there. Um, but, and how I do it is, they're hard to get off. So I just, well, they're talking to each other here now. So I just wind, wind my fabric up or fold it up like this. Well, that's not working very well. I fold it up and then I just attach the, okay, it's all stuck to each other. I'm not going to be able to do this because now they're stuck on top and I don't want to crinkle on you. But then you put one on the top and one on the bottom. And like I said, even on like big samplers where you have a lot of excess fabric, um, it will hold several layers. So it is the best thing that I've found for this. And again, it's so lightweight. And I like that too, because I was using, um, what were those called, sew tights? I was using little magnetic bars that quilters use for holding their pieces together when they're um, hand piecing. And those were fabulous, but they were heavier. And these are so light that it's really nice to use these. And I'm, I've only gotten one set for myself, a set of three, because you know I only am stitching on one thing at a time. So you don't need a lot of them, but it's really handy to have. Or sometimes like if this corner is up here and I'm stitching up here, and I just, I don't want to be hitting that all the time. You know, I'll just fold that over and put a magnet on the top and bottom of that. So that's my number one of three things. I just, I'm so happy to find this. Now I'm going to move them out of the way because they're all, look, see, they stick to each other. There's one there, there's one stuck there. So be careful. They are strong. And I have decided I keep them upright um, when I put them on my magnetic board or whatever magnet thing I'm using. I keep them upright instead of flat because it's easier to pick them up that way when it's upright. So there you go. Really cool. And I um, will link to those in the notes below. All right. Number two, uh, three things. I just got a new book. And I've started reading it, and I really like it. It's, it's How to Know a Person by David Brooks. It just came out this week. And he talks about illuminators and diminishers as people. It's not like I feel like I need to get to know people a whole lot better. But what I liked, I read an article uh, that he wrote that talked about illuminators and diminishers as people. And what are you? Do you illuminate people? or do you diminish people? And I think I shared with you one time, my friend Lisa and her husband Paul, um, they, when they go somewhere, they remind each other to be a there you are kind of a person instead of a here I am kind of a person. And that's the same with illuminators and diminishers. Like illuminators focus on the other person and wanting to know more about that person and making that person feel um, just valued and seen, whereas diminishers are just more all about here I am, you know, talking about myself. So I got this book because I thought it's going to be good to learn more about that and learn more how to be a better illuminating kind of a person rather than a diminishing kind of person. So if that sounds interesting to you, I will link to that one below. And then the Instagram, number three, I usually try and do an Instagram um, recommendation for you. And that recommendation is Soul Seeds for All. And I'm sure some of you already follow them. It's all positive, uplifting things. Um, different people doing different wonderful things in their communities. Um, different funny, encouraging kinds of, um, not really memes, but pictures shared. It's just a really positive, uh, uplifting kind of an uh, account to follow and we all need that right now so soul seeds for all again I'll link to it in the notes below remember the notes below are 
Um, there is there are a couple of sentences right below my video when you're watching my video and it says thanks so much for joining me today and then it gets into dot 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 and there's a word that says more I think if you click on more then that expands and lists link to the things I've talked about today including the three things so those are my three things now I wanted to go through I told you I would do this last time and then we ran out of time and I think we have time to do it today um, I made a list in the, at the end of August of things that I wanted to work on this fall because all of a sudden I have, I don't know, 25 whips or something. And I was one who was never going to have more than a couple of whips. I think it's good to have a couple um, because, you know, sometimes you want just something different to work on. So I like the idea of having some whips, but I certainly didn't need that many whips. So in August, I thought, okay, I'm going to go through this and decide what things do I want to work on for the next four months. And I think that's probably something that I will do each quarter just because um, I've already finished two of them. I mean, one of them was Turkey Hollow Farm by Stacy Nash, which I showed you last time. And the other one was my long time whip from the 1980s. Uh, that Judith Kirby Halloween scene that I showed you the last time. So those were two of them. I think I had 10 or 12 things in my um, list and I put them in a bin, but I also have two new things that I want to start. Well, three. Okay, three. So I wanted to show you those things. So here are the new things that I really want to start. The first one is the Notre Dame Alphabets and Joyous Noel from Mojo, Mojo Stitches. And I don't want to do the whole thing, but I love having this whole alphabet, these beautiful letters as a reference because I love what she did on the bottom there where she just did a little Joyous Noel and framed it. And I, that's what I want to make. But can't you just see doing all different words with those beautiful alphabets? I mean, to me, this pattern is a reference pattern because I can see myself taking those some of those different um, letters and using them for other projects. So I want to do that cute little pillow. And then this I've had kitted up for several months and it's the Embroiderous Stocking by Kathy Barrick. And I pulled it in the NPIs. The only change, I think I added a blue. There is a blue. But I think I'm going to change her dress to more of a blue color maybe. And I think I kitted it for straw or Havana. I'll tell you. Here are the colors. Oh, I don't have them on a ring. That would be more helpful, wouldn't it? So I have it all ready to go because I was really excited about it. So those are the colors. And it's straw, 40 count straw. I'm not sure if I'm going to do it as a stocking or just make it long. I've seen some people who have just made it long and not done the stocking, although I don't have a stocking like that, so maybe. But anyway, I can't wait to work on this. I thought that I was going to kit it up and take it right home and start it immediately, which you know how that goes, but I didn't. So that is in my list of new starts for this fall and you know it's going to be november next week like two months of my plan for the next quarter is already gone i'm not going to do quarters that's only three months i'm gonna to have to do every four months <clears throat> i won't get it done every three months okay another one i want to start and my friend sandy started this one so i want to stitch that with her apparently i have two color options and that's Stacy Nash Christmas at Hollyberry Farm, which I have loved for a long, long time. All of her Hollyberry Farm stuff is beautiful. So I, I want to do it a little lighter than that because I want to see the border a little bit better. So my two choices, I have um, Hog Bristle from Fox and Rabbit and I have Coco from Weeks Dye Works. I'm thinking probably Coco from Weeks Dye Works. And I pulled some colors from Victorian Motto, which I used to be in their club, which they don't do anymore. 
And so I kind of, you know, like we talked about last time, did different colors. This is a very warm palette, olive greens and warm reds, and I wanted more of a cool palette. So I pulled the cool greens and the cool red. So I will probably work on that, maybe in December. I mean, it's certainly not something I'm gonna get done this season. But I at least want to start it because I'd love to have it framed by next Christmas. I don't know if that's possible. We'll see. So those are the three things that I want to start in my bin. And then here are the things that I really want to work on. Now some of these, okay, aren't project bags fun? I love project bags. Some of these were samplers that I started during May, I started a different sampler every week because I have these samplers that I have loved for a long time. So this one is the 1809 Francis Eden sampler. I got this at the attic in Arizona. And I just can't wait to have these on my wall. I haven't done anything since I showed it to you, my progress in May. So I worked on it for one week, each of these samplers. But the colors are beautiful, aren't they? And I love that there's not a border on there that I have to deal with. So I want to get back to that. This kind of reminds me of um, Martha Evans colors, bright. Not the same colors, but bright colors in general. And I like bright colors. Sometimes. So that's one that I is in my list. Another one that's on my list that I started back in May is, okay, you know, some project bags are just a little tight. I'm trying not to buy those anymore. Elizabeth Furnace, 1836. The colors on this are just so gorgeous. So I did Adam and Eve Tree. And that's basically all I did was the tree, but it was a lot of stitching. It was a week of stitching. But next to the tree are those big cabbage flowers that I can't wait to get to. And then the house. I love the whole thing. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm... Did I show you the back? Or did I show you the front? I feel like I showed you the back. Some, I was watching somebody this week. I caught up on a little bit of floss tube finally this week. And somebody was showing the back. And I know you just sit there thinking, it's the back. Look at your piece. It's the back. Turn it around. I don't know if I showed you the back. Here's the front, just in case. So that's one. I think even if I uh, made the effort to work on them two or three days each. You know, I'd feel like I was making progress forward on some of these that I'm just so looking forward to having up on my wall. Let's see, what was another one? I, this was another one, no. Let's see if I have another one that I started. Here's another one that I started that week in May, and this is Barbara Anna, The Fall. A lot of words in there, which I don't think I mind, but I did mind it. It was a lot of stitching words. But I also did the middle, and that was fun. So let me show you that. I'm gonna be sure to show you the front. Okay, I didn't iron these, so these are a little, sorry, wrinkly. So here's where I am on that one. I keep thinking if I just get the words done, then all the rest is fun stitching but it's a lot of words to get to the fun stitching part. So I need to make a little more progress. Maybe if I did one side of the stitching, then I could go down and do some fun stuff and then do the other side. Because if I have to do all the stitching before I do anything else fun, I don't think I'm gonna make it. Okay, then I have so these are all the ones in my bin for fall stitching. I'm already behind. It's halfway done. Martha Evans. 
Mm, the colors in here are so beautiful. And it was so fun because when we went to the attic for summer school, we went to Tanya's house the day before, and I saw the real Martha Evans, like the original. It is huge. It's right in her entryway, and it is absolutely beautiful. Okay, where where's the fabric? Here it is. And this one, I decided I'm going to do from one of my grandmas. So I really want to get this going. So here's where I'm at. I love that cartouche in the middle. And like I said, the colors are just so bright. I'm doing it in MPIs, the called for MPIs. This is the one that, well, I got to finish that words for home. But as soon as I finish that for Christmas time, I'm going to go jump into this one. Because I think that's what I'm, or maybe start that embroiderous stocking. That's calling to me as well. All right. Then I have this one, which was a project from summer school last year. I don't know if this is out yet. It seems like it should be from Samplers Remember, Jane Eleanor Lee. Again, really pretty colors. I can just see a whole sampler wall of bright, happy, pretty colors. You know, you have your sampler walls of reproduction colors that are a little more muted but it would also be fun to have a really bright sampler wall, I think. So here's, oh, you know, this bugs me to have wrinkly wrinkles, but okay. So I have the border meeting up with itself and I started stitching in the little colored flowers. This is a good one. I, I would call this a comfort stitch because especially when you're at this point because you're just filling in little balls of color all around and it's happy colors. You know, that's another thing. Maybe your comfort stitching is happy bright colors. Maybe your comfort stitching is calm, subdued colors. It's going to be one of my, it's going to be my question of the day pretty soon here when I'm done. We'll talk about that. What is comfort stitching to you. All right, this one I'm doing for my dad. I've had a hard time going back to it since he passed away last summer, a year ago, summer. But I really want to do this. I really want to get back to it. I love the pattern. And I'm doing it in this beautiful blue MPI Hank. If I could find my glasses, I would tell you what the color is, but who knows, here they are. It's color 324, Williamsburg Blue Range. I did this because it's like the color of his eyes. I thought that would be pretty. So here's where I'm at on that one. Comfort stitching because it's one color and I really enjoy stitching, doing one color stitching. Because like I said, you just don't have to think. You don't have to think about color changes or symbols. You just stitch. Wow, it's a big project. All of these are big projects. It's a little intimidating to have all of these big projects. And I keep doing smalls because I just think I need, I want something that I can finish. That's also comfort stitching. Having finishes that you know, gives you a sense of accomplishment. And I think that's important too. All right, this is a no, I'm not gonna do that one. That was a Halloween one that I decided not to do. What's in here? Oh, I love this one. I've got to get back to this one. Where's the, let's see. I'm gonna find a cover so I can show you this Quaker's hometown. I love this one. And um, I don't know if you remember in past floss tubes, who can remember everybody's past floss tubes, but I did um, Quaker Christmas 2 from Bygone Stitches, and that is predominantly red with 
pops of green. All of the different um, Christmas carols are done in green. So I'm doing this one in the same colors of Sulky because this is predominantly green with pops of red. And I, I cannot wait to get back to that. So I'm using Sulky. I'll tell you the colors because somebody will ask. Mine are cool colors because you know I like cool colors in general. So these are the two, the red and green that I'm using. And the green is 1174 and the red is 0035. Sulky Petites. Sulky Petites are perfect on 36 count in my opinion. Um, it's like one and a half to two strands of DMC. A lot of times I feel like one strand on 36 of the DMC is a little light for my preferences. I know a lot of you guys like that and I've been stitching that actually lately trying to but generally I like it a little heavier so the sulky is perfect for that because it does give you a little heavier coverage okay I'm gonna get back to that one maybe not Martha maybe I'm gonna go back to this one next because isn't that beautiful and isn't that whole thing gonna be stunning when it's done mm. in the pattern it's actually dark gray and red but to me, when I saw it, I thought, oh, green and red, Christmas, that's beautiful. And so in my mind, I wanted, to, I was picturing it in green and red, and that's why I did it. But the actual pattern itself, I think, calls for gray and red, also beautiful. But then I got the idea that it would be a good companion piece to my Quaker Christmas too, and then that's all she wrote, because I had my mind made up. All right, I'm gonna go back to that one. And then the last one, I think, I don't think I've showed you this one, is what? Mm. Yeah, Scarlet Berries by Scarlet House. And I started this because this was a summer school project. Summer school is the retreat at the attic, which is really fun to do. And so we got this at summer school and I started it there. See, I always feel like I have more done, and then I open it up and I'm like, well, that's hardly anything. That's how much I have done. But this one has, um, that whole middle section is all initials. So if you wanna do like a family sampler with all of your initials, or you wanna do a sampler for um, grandparents with all the initials of the grandkids or whatever, that's a really fun one to do because it, it allows you to personalize. And you know, once I get this bottom done, it's just initials. That's gotta go pretty quickly. So those were the ones that I pulled to do over the next, well, four months, two of which are gone. It's okay. It's better to pull more than not enough. You, then you have choices that you can pick. I do think I'm gonna re rejigger it January, January, February, March, April, and then I'll have four months over the winter to do, uh, I feel like I'm waving my hands in this video. I know that's super annoying. I'm sorry. I'm going to like hold onto my arms and stop talking with my hands. I don't usually talk with my hands. I don't know. I get into floss tube and I'm just like, Ugh. okay, so I'm not using my hands. All right, so let's go on to a few things from the shop. Also, uh, winter from last time, you had to use the word fall in your comment. This pattern and kit is what I was giving away last time. That goes to Arlene Nickerson. Arlene, my email is below in the notes. If you can email me, I will get this shipped right off to you. All right. This is what we're going to do for a giveaway. My husband keeps telling me we should do this. And um, so I'm going to give away a whole set of our chenille trims. There's 20 colors in our chenille trims. I use the chenille trims all the time in my finishing. That and Baker's Twine. And each package is five yards. So there's 100 yards of chenille trim. Look, I brought them all here for you. So somebody's going to get the whole set 
of all of these beautiful trims. There's blues, greens, reds, neutrals. All right, 20 colors. We do sell a full set on the website, but this one is going to be free to somebody. 20 colors, 100 yards. So if you're doing cute little pillows for Christmas gifts or for friends, you're going to have a whole library of trims. Um, the word to use in your comment, if you would like to be entered into that drawing, is the word trim, T-R-I-M. And I will use the random picker next time to pick somebody to win that. Of course, I'm happy to ship it wherever. So if you're um, across the pond in a different country, that's totally fine. All right, now let's talk a little bit and just really quickly, um, I'm going to go through some of the new things that we've gotten in the shop. Uh, first of all, I brought this um, stitch back home that I did because I, I try and keep this set in stock for those of you who want to do a whole piece like this. Um, I, it was four different patterns from With Thy Needle and Thread, Brenda. We do sell out, but I always order more. So we sell it in a set of four. They're also really cute, done up individually. I just, at one time, saw somebody on Facebook who had done the whole thing together like this and that just really captured my attention. So we have the whole set of these again under With Thy Needle and Thread, if you're interested in doing that. I talked about um, how I kind of worked this and did it all together. I don't know, a few episodes ago. Um, but basically I started over here, I stitched it as it was, and then I just filled in, did some extra vines. I wanted these guys facing each other. So I just kind of played it by ear. I got a big enough piece of fabric that I didn't have to worry about running out of room because it's a long piece. And I did it on 28 count over one. I think this is um, Smoky Clouds or something, Lugana. 28 count so but that's just to say we have that back in stock um, so let's go over Brenda's new patterns because she just came out with some cute new ones and I also brought two of her older ones but want to make sure you know we have that so one of them is coming to America and this was a kit that she sold um, with the fabric and the floss and everything and it was just going to be a kit and then she had so many people who missed out on it and wanted to do it so she came out with the pattern again and we've had this for a few months and it has um, the names of the some of the women of the Mayflower in there you could also of course stitch it and leave out the middle section of names if you don't want to do that much um, stitching of names but it's really a beautiful sampler. The other one is I Love Fall Most of All. I think this was an exclusive last year, but that is now out. And aren't those pretty soft colors? So these are the kind of colors I thought I was doing in that Prairie Schooler. Soft, pretty, pastel -y fall colors. But her new ones are Reindeer Games. Okay, that's fun. All of those ornaments, the reindeer, getting, not getting into trouble, but they're decorating the house, they've got presents, they looks like they're eating berries from the berry tree, giving Santa a ride. The neat thing though is it comes with the ornaments, the wooden pieces to finish them into ornaments. So, cute. Um, peppermint and pine, I know I'm going to be doing some of those and maybe all of those. Of course I want to do the cardinal and I love the owl but the other little one is sweet too so three different birds and then she came out with snow magical and I do like snow globes and I do like snowmen so that might be a must do for me as well and then the light of winter and this is kind of a companion piece to winter rose manor which I've done but colors in that are so pretty and I remember seeing this I think this was a retreat piece she did for somebody I don't remember who and I remember seeing it on Instagram thinking oh my gosh that is beautiful 
It's got angels, it's got reindeer, of course the house. So those are the new ones from Brenda. We have two new ones, not new, reprints. So um, our distributor is in, has all of the Blackbird designs and they've been reprinting some of them um, with Alma's uh, permission or input. And so the latest two reprints are Peppermint and Holly and this is 10 winter samplers. I'm gonna show you the back because it shows you some more of them. So that's really a pretty piece. I'll show you the two that I think are these two. These two are the ones I'm most tempted by. Peppermint and Holly. And I don't know how that works. I don't know if once they reprint them, they do a certain number and then they go out of print again, or if once they decide to reprint them, they just kind of keep reprinting them at some point you know, you have to get a certain number to make it worth the cost of having the printing done. And this is a really nice book. So I don't know how long they'll be around, I assume for quite a while. Um, the other one is Bringing Good Cheer. And what I like about this one is the thick border. And then you have a little berry bowl in the middle with a little alphabet. But that looks really fun to stitch. Here's the antique sampler on the back that she kind of it's, so it's not a reproduction. A lot of times Alma will take an antique sampler and take parts and pieces and rejigger it, which I think is really interesting. And of course it always is beautiful what she comes up with. Teresa Kogut has a new book called Hello Autumn. Teresa's books are always well done. And let's see. Let's see if I can show any pictures without showing. Hmm. All these, all these pictures of the done ones are right across from the graphs. So I'm not going to be able to show you that. But there are some really cute ones in here. I don't want to bend the book because it's not my book. Um, but there are some really fun patterns in here. And more focused on at, um, autumn. So again, there's a really cute turkey in here. Um, there are two cute scarecrow patterns. There are um, two pumpkin heads, which to me is more, probably more Halloween, but they're adorable. So that is the latest from Teresa Kogut. And then we have new patterns from the Artsy Housewife. So she came out with a study in nature. Isn't that gorgeous on that red? And lovely dove. Christmas chicken. Okay, I'm not even into chickens and I want to do that one. I don't know what it is about Gigi. She's the designer for Artsy Housewife, but she'll design things and I, I see some of her things that I'm not into and I think I have to stitch it. Coffee and eggs is another example. I love that pattern. It is very, um, to me, harvest gold, avocado green, like 70s look. And I just is so intriguing I have to stitch that one so this is another one not into chickens but I love that one and then Primrose Cottage uh, we sold out of one of them the stitching one of the stitching ones will get more immediately uh, but they also have autumn quilt which is pretty and you know you could do those in any colors you love I love fall most of all this is not a new one, but it's appropriate for the season, Autumn Alphabet. And then of course the Christmas, Christmas Quaker that I showed you is new. And then the last thing is we added a few more um, Mill Hill kits in again for the holidays. So we've got three different kinds of snow globes. These kits come with perforated paper. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's 14 count. And all the thread, all the beads you need, any charms you need. And they're just kind of fun to do. Um, there's Santas. I have a couple different Santas. We have gnomes. We have snowmen. If you've never done um, a Mill Hill kit with the beads, I'm putting my hands down. 
it's very fun to do. You stitch all the stitches and then you put the beads on and the beads are really easy to add. They've got good directions. Basically you just make one part of your X, put the bead on, go down in the hole, come up through the other hole, shoot through the hole in the bead and down and it just centers and anchor it centers and anchors your beads perfectly. All right. So I think that is everything. Um, remember to go to our website, uh, coloradocrossstitcher.com. Uh, sign up for our newsletter. You can do that at the bottom of the home page. I send out a newsletter every Wednesday. Um, I try to add other stuff besides just look what we got in this week because I want it to be valuable to you and worth your time to open up. Um, and so I'd love to have you join in on that. I think that's all for now. I can't wait to be back with you again, probably after Thanksgiving, because I'm trying to do them about every four weeks, just so I have enough to show you, enough uh, stitching to show you. So I'm excited about some of the things that I'm working on now to be able to show you the next time. So thank you so much for joining me. Question of the day, what is comfort stitching to you? Um, is it one color stitching? Is it stitching on bigger fabrics? Is it really hard stitching that keeps your concentration? So what helps you? I think stitching in general is comforting, but what, what do you gravitate towards when you really want relaxing stitching? So that's the question of the day. Please leave your comments below. I love reading your comments and talking to you in the comment section. And I will be back next week. Or not next week. I will not be back next week. I will be back next month. I'll see you in four weeks. Bye.